Okay, so I already did a video today about drop spindles, but I did it on my other camera, so I don't know if it'll ever download or not. Because my computer cord is with my husband. So, this is a drop spindle that I made out of a dowel, a hook, and a coaster. I just drilled a hole in it. The reason this is not a nice uh, drop spindle is because the coaster is, I didn't drill it evenly, so it wobbles. However, if you wanted to, you could just use um, a potato stuck on the end. As long as it's something weighted that allows it to spin, um, it works. Uh, the best one that I know of that's the cheapest is to take a CD and a, a rubber grommet that fits in the hole of the CD, and then the inside of that grommet is the size of your dowel, and you just slide that on. And you don't have to have hooks. You can just tie a knot on it, What you do. Here, I'll show you. Okay, so there it is. Flip it over. See that? Okay, so you don't even have to have a hook. You can just do this so cheap. It doesn't even have to cost you. So what you do is you spin it. And it's easier if you learn how to draft on your leg. Drafting is the art of pulling wool out of a pile of wool so that it is uniform, so that it creates a string rather than a blob. And you'll see that this is not anything but just wonky. This is a drop spindle. I'm going to show you a supported spindle in a minute. You can go out because you decided you didn't want to help me anymore, so go out and shut the door. No, you may talk to me when I'm done with the video. Go on out. If you interrupt me again, I will find you some work to do. Then you slip it off. It's easier to slip it off if there's not a hook there. So if you were doing that knot, you wouldn't have a hook here. So you don't do that knot without the hook. How did I say that? The only reason you need to do that is if you don't have a hook. If you have a hook, use the hook. So yeah, and I suggest it should look like a spider web. When you pull it out, the space between the fibers should remind you of a spider web. They should not remind you of um, cotton candy. <laughs> it should be much thinner than that. And I'm I'm not doing it real thin. That's that's not a terribly thin rope. See, but it looks like it from a distance. Okay, when you wind it up, you take it off the hook. And you just wind it onto the bottom, and that becomes your bobbin. So if it was a sewing machine, this would be your bobbin. And you don't want to have a whole lot of yarn in your hand when you're doing this because it has a tendency to like hang down and get caught in this. And if you come to the end of it, let it spin. And when you reconnect it, you pull it down and make it overlap. So you can see that. You can see that. I'm going to hold it down some distance on that yarn and let it overlap. And it will spin on and you can just smooth it out and I can even pull that part off and you have a new join. A drop spindle is harder than a um, supported spindle because you your string has to be uh, your string has to be heavy enough and well twisted enough to hold the support of the to, to hold the weight of the spindle but I want to show you how it goes eventually so once you get to this point when i was trying really hard to learn how to do this this is how i learned how to do a good job on the spinning wheel was learning how to do it with a hand um with the drop spindle because you know you have a good thread if you can support the weight of your drop spindle whereas with this uh, spinning wheel there's no weight there so you go to knit with it later and it breaks because you didn't understand how to get the twist right so when you when you start doing it like that so you have it spinning and you stand up and you do it up until you have your hands up above your head. The better your drop spindle is, the longer it'll hold that spin. So you can tell it's not a good drop spindle because it's not holding that spin very long. And once you have your hands up over your head, what you do is hold it in your hand and jerk it up with this hand. And it just flies up and is in your hand. And there's a nice book that's about spindles from a lady that learned how to spin 
in an Indian community where they make like the Navajo blankets and stuff for their living. She learned how to drop spin there and they would actually do their drop spinning off cliffs to see who could go down the longest and then jerk it back up and catch it. So who, who had the longest amount of yarn on their spindle, which I think is really interesting. I think that's fabulous. And it is fun. You can take this outside and there's old pictures of ladies with drop spindles that were using it for um, linen. So they'd have the big distaff like in a holder, like the long distaff in like a pouch here and then an arm around it. And then they'd be pulling the fiber off and walking around with their drop spindle in their hands. And it's kind of amazing. But it, it in this Navajo uh, tribe, the children were the ones who would do the spinning and the adults, the mothers, were the ones who would do the weaving. And so the children would do all their playing during the day with the drop spindle in their hand because they were part of making their family's livelihood. So they would run and jump and squeal and laugh with the drop spindle in their hand making, making this yarn, which I think is a really fun story. Oh, I was going to show you how to use the drop. The... Okay, so this is a spindle in. This is the base. So sorry, I kind of got distracted with my talking. The supported spindle is best for a really thin thread because it is, um, although you can make very strong thin thread, pardon me, a supported spindle is good if you're not real good with your drop spindle. And let's see, what a mess. <laughs> this is the one that Paige uses and she likes to teach her little friends how to use it and it comes back kind of messy. So okay so you this is your this is your bobbin and this just sits in there and you hold it you hold it between your knees nice and firm so where it's a little harder to use a drop spindle like in a car it's easy to use something like this in a car because it's um if you have a long piece make sure to put it over your arms they didn't bend it last time they used it they might have though. I don't really like supported spindles that much. What is wrong with this picture? Ah, I've had small children playing with my things. It's never good. I'm going to take that off and see if I can try it on a different one. See if they broke all of them or just one. So when also, once you do a spindle and it's full, you wind it into a ball. So let's see how this... On these ones, it's important that this black piece, have your fingers have access to it because that's how you, um, that's how you spin it. Is you need that it's kind of a gummy rubbery feeling and if you don't have it there then you're trying to spin it on the metal and it's it's slick okay so it's just the same as a drop spindle except that you're holding it with your knees see there's no drop you come down here wind it on and because it doesn't have a drop, it means you have less space to spin onto before you have to put it onto the bobbin. And I don't like that. I like to have that nice long drop. Pull out the vegetable matter. But, you know, for little kids to learn how to spin, or if you're trying to figure out how to draft, this isn't a bad way to go. But it definitely doesn't tell you how good your yarn is like a drop spindle. A drop spindle just tells you, yeah, that's a strong yarn. I will not break when you drop me. And these ones don't. They don't get that. They just say, well, I held together long enough for you to get me onto the bobbin. Okay, so that's how you do it. It's called a spindle in. So, um, again, not my absolute favorite.
Okay. So when you're getting ready to ply, which is um, to ply means to take two pieces of yarn that are spun in the same direction and tie them together and spin them in the opposite direction. When you do that, it makes yarn. That's what yarn is, is two or more pieces. You can get, you can do single ply, but it is called single ply. It's not necessarily called yarn. I mean, it is a yarn. Um, and when you do yarn, um, I wonder if I should start a new video for that because that was the, that was just drop spindling. I'm going to start a new video for that and explain it here in just a bit.